Hello and welcome to my science tutorials. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Raoult's law and lowering of vapor pressure calculations, that is, colligative properties. Before we begin, if you are new to my science tutorials, kindly consider subscribing and pressing that notification button so that you don't miss any of our latest tutorials on biology, chemistry, mathematics, and physics. So let's begin. So we want to first of all start by looking at what colligative properties are. So colligative properties are those properties of dilute solution that depends only on the number of solutes in a solution and not on its size or chemical nature. Simply put, colligative properties depend on the mole of the solute present in solution. Now these properties include 1. Lowering of vapor pressure 2. Freezing point depression 3 boiling point elevation and four osmotic pressure now it is important for us to know that these properties are all related to each other so once you are able to find the vapor pressure depression you can easily find the freezing point depression the boiling point elevation and the osmotic pressure because they are interrelated now in this tutorial we want to look at the lowering of vapor pressure that is the first one that we have over here so we are going to look at what the lowering of vapor pressure the lowering of vapor pressure now the vapor pressure of a pure solvent is lowered when a non volatile solute is added now this is because what the vapor pressure of a solvent is caused by the evaporation of the solvent molecules on the surface of the solvent okay so we have a solvent and then some of the solvent particles will evaporate okay because there is maybe sunlight coming down on them and so some particles on the surface of the solvent will evaporate then once they turn into vapor this vapor exerts some pressure on the solution or the solvent and that is what we are calling the vapor pressure now when we dissolve a solute okay the surface area reduces okay the surface area where the molecules of the pure solvent will evaporate it reduces because we now dissolve a so we now dissolve a solute sorry in the solvent so the surface area is reduced and therefore the amount of solvent molecules that becomes vapor and exert pressure now becomes less compared to the, what the pure solvent and this is what causes what the vapor pressure of the solvent or the solution to reduce now if we are representing p okay as the vapor pressure as the vapor pressure pressure of the pure solvent of pure solvent of pure solvent and we are using ps as what the vapor pressure vapor pressure of what solution then we can see the vapor pressure depression or lowering of vapor pressure which is delta p will be equal to what the vapor pressure of the solution will be less than the vapor pressure of the solvent because we are having uh, the vapor pressure being lowered so we have what p minus what p s as the vapor pressure lowering or the vapor pressure depression now we can also calculate the relative lowering of vapor pressure the relative lowering of what vapor pressure and if we want to find the relative we just divide the vapor pressure lowering by the vapor pressure of the pure solvent so it becomes what p minus p s over p as the relative lowering of vapor pressure now there is a rule that we call raoult's law raoult's law and this law states that the relative lowering of vapor pressure of a dilute solution is proportional to the mole fraction of the solute present in the dilute solution. Now we need to note something in Raoult's law. It says that what the relative lowering of vapor pressure, the relative lowering of vapor pressure, relative lowering of vapor pressure, okay, is proportional to what the mole fraction mole fraction of solute present in the solution so which means okay 
we know our relative lowering of vapor pressure is what p minus p s over p to be proportional to what the mole fraction of the solute okay the mole fraction of the solute is what the mole of the solute divided by the sum of the mole of the solute plus that of the solvent okay now we know if we remove the proportionalities and we introduce an equal to sign and then a constant the constant in this case is just one so we have what p minus p s over p to be equal to what n minus what n plus what capital n where we are saying n is what the mole of the solute and capital n is the mole of the solvent all right so now that we know this formula let's look at how to use it to calculate for an example all right so the first example we want to look at is we are to calculate the vapor pressure lowering caused by the addition of 100 gram of sucrose with a molar mass of what 342 gram per mole to 1000 gram of water if the vapor pressure of the pure water at 25 degrees Celsius is 23.8 millimetre. So let's write down our solution. So we have, we are to calculate the vapor pressure lowering, that is what delta P is what we don't know, by the addition of what 100 gram of sucrose. So our solute, okay, has the mass 100 gram. Okay. Now, the molar mass of the solute is what? 342 gram per mole. Now, we, we added it to what? The solvent. The solvent, that is the mass, is what? 1000 gram. And then the molar mass of water, which is H2O, we know, is two into bracket. Hydrogen is one. And then oxygen is 16. This is what? 18 gram per mole. Okay, now they are telling us uh, the vapor pressure of the pure water, that is what, P is what, 23, sorry, this is 23.8 millimetre. So from here, we can simply go ahead and find what our delta P. We know that what our P minus P S over P is equal to n over what small n plus capital n now the p which is the vapor pressure of the solvent minus the vapor pressure of the solution can be set to what delta p divided by p which is equal to what n over what small n plus capital n now that means we need the mole of the solute and then the mole of the solvent so let's find small n small n is equal to what the mass of the solute which is 100 on what 342 so if we punch that into our calculator we are going to get 0 0.292 mole all right so let's find capital n which is what the mole of the solvent so we have thousand grams of the solvent in what uh, 18 which is the molar mass of the solvent so if we do that we are going to get 55.5 five six more so from here we can simply find our what delta p we know delta p divided by p is what 23.8 is equal to what 0 0.292 on what 0 0.292 plus 55.556 now let me use this side now, if we punch everything here into the calculator, we are going to get delta P here over what? 23.8 to be equal to everything over here is going to give us what? 0 0.00523. Now, if we cross multiply, we get our delta P to be what? 23.8 multiplied by 0 0.00523. And this gives us the value of delta P which is equal to what 0 0.124 millimetre so it means the vapor pressure uh, depression caused by the addition of the of the sucrose okay 100 grams of sucrose to what pure water that is 1000 grams of pure water is 
zero point one two four milli mercury. All right. So now let's look at how to determine the molar mass from the lowering of vapor pressure. Now the molar mass of a non volatile solute can be determined by measuring the vapor pressure of the solution by dissolving a known weight of the solute in a known weight of the solvent. Now we know that the change in uh, vapor pressure that is this is equal to what the mole fraction that is this over n plus capital n all right so we are saying we need to how to calculate okay the calculate the molar mass of the solvent sorry of the solute if in case we don't know the solute that we are adding we just know that we are adding a particular solute to maybe water or maybe an ether and we want to find the molar mass through vapor pressure depression how do we go around that now let's look at this notation for this particular example the mole of the solute we are going to use w as the mass of the solute small w and then we are going to use small m as what the molar mass molar mass of the solute now for the capital n we are going to use capital w as the mass of the solvent and then capital m as the molar mass molar mass of the solvent now let this not confuse you by you saying the small m is mass no the small m is what molar mass and we are using w to represent the mass in this case now if we substitute these two equations let me use this equation one equation two if we substitute these two equations into this one we get that our relative lowering of vapor pressure becomes what small w over m all on what small w over m m plus what capital w over what capital m all right so this is the formula that we use if you want to calculate the molar mass of the solute provided we know the mass of the solute and then the mass of the solvent all right now it is important to also note that for very that is for very dilute solutions very dilute solutions that is the amount of our solute that we added is so small that it becomes insignificant then the the mole fraction over here which is what n divided by n plus capital n can be written as what n over what capital n that is what we ignore the small m over here for very dilute solutions only so if the question is asking you to find the molar mass for a very dilute solution we need to rep uh, replace this formula this part of the formula by what small n over capital N that means our P minus P S on capital P becomes N over what small n capital N sorry which is what P minus P S on P is equal to our small m sorry small n over here is what W over what M over what capital W over what capital M and if we resolve this we get that our P minus P S on P becomes what small w multiplied by capital m on what small m multiplied by what capital w so this is the formula that we use for what very dilute solutions all right so let's look at uh, let's have a look at two examples on how to use these derivations that is what that of uh, the normal one without very dilute solutions and then the one that we use the very dilute solution formula to find so the first one we want to look at is what the vapor pressure of ether with a molar mass of 74 is 442 millimercury at 293 kelvin if 3 grams of a compound B are dissolved in 50 grams of ether at this temperature the vapor pressure falls to what 426 millimercury we have to calculate the molar mass of P 
assume that the solution is very dilute this one they have been specific they told us that we have to assume that the solution b is very dilute so let's look at the solution for that so we have solution we know that for very dilute solutions we have p minus p s on p is equal to what n over what just capital n okay because the solution has been we've been told the solution is what a very dilute solution now all we need to do is to substitute um uh, what we know for the mole of what the solvent sorry the solute and that of the solvent so we have p minus p s over p and we know the mole of what the solute is what small w over what small m divided by capital w over what capital m which means our p minus p s over p is equal to if we resolve everything over here we get what small w multiplied by capital m over what small m multiplied by what capital w all right now let's look at our question the question is telling us the vapor pressure of eta is this okay so meaning eta is the solvent so the n okay the vapor pressure of this the capital n has the molar mass okay which is what capital w over what capital n all right so we have uh, the vapor pressure of this that is just p is what four four two milli mercury then the question is saying if three grams of compound b is dissolved in 50 grams of eta so it means the mass of eta which is the w is what 50 grams at this temperature the vapor pressure falls to this so it means the vapor pressure ps of the solution is what 426 milli mercury so we have the compound b which is the solute n which is what small w over what small m has a small w which is the mass to be what three grams and then the molar mass small m is what we don't know but now we we have the capital m okay given to us that is the molar mass of the pure eta to be what 74 so we have capital m is what 74 gram per mole okay so from here we can is uh, we can easily substitute all we have over here into the formula and we get our answer so if we do that what do we get we have our p which is what 442 minus what 426 divided by 442 to be equal to small w is 3 over here multiplied by what capital m which is what 74 then divided by what we have small m which is what we have to find so we don't know then we have capital w to be what 50 all right so if we do this we are having uh 442 minus what 426 will give us 16 over what 442 to be equal to 3 multiplied by 74 will give us what 222 over what 50m so if we cross multiply we get uh, 16 multiplied by 50m to be equal to 222 multiplied by 442 right so if we do that we get um this side gives us what 800 m to be equal to over here we have 98,124. so we divide both sides by 800 800 so we have our m to be equal to what 122.655 gram per mole so it means the molar mass of b Okay, the molar mass of B okay, is what 123, approximately 123 gram per mole. Alright, let's have a look at another example. Example number two. We have 18.2 gram of urea is dissolved in what 100 gram of water at 50 degrees Celsius. The lowering of vapor pressure produced is what 5 millimetre. We have to calculate the molar mass okay of urea given that the vapor pressure of water at 50 degrees celsius is 92 millimetre all right so let's write down our solution 
because we've not been told that this is a very dilute solution it means we are going with this as our formula which is what n over what this plus capital n okay so we have uh, 18.2 gram of urea okay so it means our small n is for urea we have thousand grams so it means small w is what 100 gram sorry 100 gram the small m is the molar mass is what we are being asked to find and uh, the lowering of vapor pressure produced it means uh, delta p is what five milli mercury we have to calculate the molar mass which is this of you are given that the vapor pressure of water so it means our p is equal to 92 milli mercury all right so uh Oh, sorry um the small w over here uh is supposed to be 18.2 that is what uh the mass of the urea and then uh the mass of water which is capital w is supposed to be 100 gram sorry about that all right so we know the molar mass of water is 18 gram per mole so from here we can easily do the substitution and find our answer which is what small n all right so let's have a look at what we have we know p minus ps is what the delta p so we have five on our p which is 92 to be equal to the top over here we have um this becomes small w which is what 18.2 divided by m which we don't know all on what 18.2 divided by what m plus capital W which is a uh, hundred on what 18 all right so from here if we solve this or we simplify this we get uh, 0 0.0543 so we have 0 0.0543 to be equal to 18.2 on M all over 18.2 on M plus 100 on 18 is what 5.556 all right so if we cross multiply we do call cross multiplication we are going to get 18.2 on m to be equal to this multiply by this so we have 0 0.0543 into bracket 18.2 on m plus what 5.556 Alright, so we have 18.2 on M to be equal to, if you multiply this by this, we get what, 0 0.98826 on M, plus this multiplied by this, we get what, 0 0.3017. So we send this to the other side of the equal to sign, so we have 18.2 on M divided by 0 0.9, sorry, minus 0 0.98826. 826 on m to be equal to 0 0.3017 so because they have the same denominator we just subtract the numerators and so if we do that we get 17.21174 on m to be equal to 0 0.3017 so from here our value of m is what 17.21174 divided by 0 0.3017 and hence our m is if we punch this into the calculator we are going to get 57.049 so it means the molar mass of urea is what approximately 57 gram per mole all right now we also want to look at um Ostwald, something we call the Ostwald Walker method. Okay, so we have the Ostwald Walker method. Walker method. Okay, and this is another way of what calculating for the molar mass of a, of a solute, and this one is much more easier. Okay, so from the Ostwald Walker method, it is telling us what the relative lowering of vapor pressure 
is equal to what w2 over what w1 plus what w2 where our w1 is what the loss of mass of solution this is loss of mass of solution and our w2 is what the loss of mass of solvent okay so normally we use the Oswald Walker method to find what the relative lowering vapor pressure and then after we find that we can now equate this okay so we can now equate this to what we know as this to now find the molar mass of the solid okay so assuming in an experiment the loss of mass of the solution which is w1 and then the loss of mass of uh, the solvent are given and you are not given the mole fraction or the mole of the solute or the solvent how do you go ahead to find the vapor pressure or the relative vapor pressure before you use that to find the molar mass so we use the Oswald Walker method to find the relative lowering of the vapor pressure before we use that to find the molar mass of the solute so let's have a look at an example of this method so we have a current of dry air was passed through sorry a current of dry air was passed through a solution of 2.46 2.64 gram of benzoic acid in 30 gram of ether and then through pure ether the loss in weight of solution was 0 0.645 grams and ether was what 0 0.0345 gram what is the molar mass of benzoic acid okay so in this particular example let's write down solution first we can see that they are saying a current of dry air was passed through a solution of we are given the mass of benzoic acid and we have what the mass of ether okay now the they are giving us loss in weight of solution and that of what the solvent okay so we need to use the loss in weight of solution and then the loss in weight of the ether which is what the solvent to find the lowering vapor pressure okay before we can be able to use it to calculate for the molar mass of the benzoic acid All right so let's go ahead so we know p minus ps over p according to the what uh us what we were committed is equal to what w2 over w1 plus what w2 now which means this over this on p is equal to now the w2 which is the loss loss of mass of solvent okay we have uh, the loss in weight of the solution so this is for the solution so it means this is for the solvent so we have 0 0.0345 on 0 0.0345 which is for the w2 over here plus the w1 is now what this so 0 0.645 so it means the relative lowering of vapor pressure from the Ostwald Walker method okay is equal to if we punch everything here into the calculator we are going to get 0 0.051 so now that we have this we can easily find the molar mass of the solute okay so we know that P minus PS on P is equal to what small w on what small m all over what small w on um hello and welcome to my science tutorials in today's video we are going to be talking about Raoult's law and boiling point elevation calculation now in our previous tutorial we did mention what qualitative properties are in the various examples we also look at the relationship between vapor pressure depression and the mole fraction from the law that we call Raoult's law now in this tutorial we want to look at the relationship between the boiling point elevation and then the lowering of vapor pressure now when a liquid is heated its vapor pressure rises and when it is equal to the atmospheric temperature the liquid boils 
Now, the addition of a non-volatile solute to the solution lowers the vapor pressure. Now, once the vapor pressure is lowered, it implies that what more heat needs to be applied to the solution for the uh, atmospheric temperature to be reached before the solution begins to boil. So, hence, the boiling point of that particular solution after we add the non-volatile solute increases. Now, if we are using the representation Tb as the boiling point of our solvent, let's use black. If, so, if we are using Tb as what? The boiling point, the boiling point of the solvent. And we are using T as the boiling point of solution. So, boiling point of solution. Okay? We are now saying that what? Our boiling point elevation, which is delta T, should be equal to what? T minus what? TB. That means... We are subtracting the boiling point of the solvent from the boiling point of the solution because we know the boiling point of the solution, okay, after we add the solute, will not be higher than the boiling point of the original solvent. So this becomes what our boiling point elevation. Now, the elevation of boiling point has been found to be what directly proportional to the lowering or the relative lowering of vapor pressure, which means our delta T is proportional to what p minus p is what p now in our first tutorial we've made mention of what the relative lowering of vapor pressure is so where this is the vapor pressure of uh, the solvent this is the vapor pressure of the solution okay now we also look at uh, from the combination of Raoult's law we also look at the relative vapor pressure being equal to a formula that we said was what w capital m divided by capital W small m where we said W is the mass of solute mass of solute and then small m is what the molar mass molar mass of solute we said capital W was mass of what the solvent and capital M was the molar mass the molar mass of what the solvent all right now in this example from this formula we know we are if we are using a solvent let's say water we know the solvent will be the same if before we add the temperature and after sorry before we add the solute so we are assuming our what the molar mass which is the m over here the molar mass of the solvent is a constant so once the molar mass of the solvent is a constant, this formula becomes what? Something that we have like P minus PS on P to be equal to what? W over what? Capital W multiplied by M. Okay? But we said what the relative lowering of vapor pressure over here is proportional to the uh, change in temperature or the boiling point elevation. So we can represent this by what? Delta T being proportional to this. So we have W but what capital W multiplied by M. All right, now if we remove the proportionality sign over here, we introduce a constant that we call what KB, then multiply by W over what capital W by what small m. All right, so from here, what we need to take note of is the fact that the mass of the solvent, okay, the mass of the solvent is w is in what one kilogram of the solvent okay so we are dealing with what one kilogram of the solvent that means the formula here becomes what kb multiplied by small w over what now the mass is in what one kilogram which is what thousand grams multiplied by what m so if we do the substitution very well we can see that our whole formula over here, everything over here, because this is W divided by 1000 grams. So it becomes KB multiplied by W multiplied by the 1000 comes to the top. Then divided by, sorry, let me use, let me write it over here. So we have delta T is equal to KB multiplied by small w multiplied by 1000 all divided by capital W by small n. So this now becomes 
our what formula for boiling point elevation where we are saying what our delta t over here is the boiling point elevation our kb is our what molar elevation constant molar elevation constant and w small w over here is the mass of solute small w is what mass of solute that is in grams and then small m oh sorry small w is the mass then small m is the molar mass of solute that is the molar mass of solute and capital w is what the mass of solvent mass of solvent also in grams now there are some cases where the value of kb may be given in what kb pair so we may have they say the question will give you kb per 0 0.1 kilogram okay of the solvent now when this happens it means instead of dissolving the the solute in one kilogram of the solvent which requires us to use this formula to find any other parameter this time around they are dissolving it in 0 0.1 kilogram which is what 100 grams of the solvent it means the entire formula over here becomes this delta t is equal to kb multiplied by w multiplied by 100 all over capital w multiplied by m because the 100 here is because the question is telling us is in what 0 0.1 kilogram of the solvent but when the question does not stipulate whether kb or the solute has been dissolved in any gram of the solvent at all we know the standard way to do is what is to assume the solute was dissolved in what one kilogram of the solvent and then we use thousand but when the question says in 0 0.1 kilogram we use 100 to add up to the formula and use so we need to take note of this question one that is in one kilogram okay of solvent or this is the standard way if the question did not say one kilogram you use this formula if it states this you also use it and when the question says 0 0.1 kilogram which is what 100 pounds we use this formula all right so with this brief introduction let's go ahead and look at some few examples on boiling point elevation so the first example we want to look at is the boiling point of a solution containing 0 0.2 gram of a substance s in 20 gram of ether is 0 0.17 kelvin higher than the higher than that of pure ether calculate the molar mass of x boiling point constant of ether per one kilogram is 2.6 2.16 kelvin all right so let's write down our solution and look at the parameters that we have so solution so the boiling point elevation sorry the boiling point of a solution containing 0 0.2 gram of substance x so it means our solute the mass which is small w is what 0 0.20 grams of what substance s in 20 gram of ether so it means our capital w is what 20 grams of ether is so the boiling point elevation so the change in boiling point okay as as a result of uh, this is what delta t is what 0 0.17 kelvin okay higher than that of pure ether all right so calculate the molar mass so we have to find m small m okay of x boiling point uh elevation constant is given to us as what so our kb is what 2.16 kelvin all right so with this parameter let's go ahead and calculate our molar mass of the substance x all right so we know that the formula delta t is equal to what kb multiplied by small w multiplied by thousand and the question also said per one kilogram so we are using thousand divided by capital w by what small m now if we make m the subject over here we cross multiply we get delta t by capital w by small m is equal to kb by w by thousand 
So if we divide all by what? Delta T by W, capital W, we get our molar mass to be what? KB multiplied by W by 1000 all over what? Delta T multiplied by capital W. So it means our molar mass is equal to KB, which is what? 2.16 multiplied by the W, which is 0 0.20 multiplied by 1000. All on what? The change in temperature over here is 0 0.17 then multiplied by the capital W is 20. So if we put everything here into the calculator, we are going to get 127.05 as our molar mass. So it means the molar mass or the molecular mass of what? Of substance X is what? 127 gram per mole. All right. So let's have a look at another example. Example number two. Acetone boils at 56.38 degrees Celsius and a solution of 1.41 gram of organic solid in 20 gram of acetone boils at what? 56.88 degrees Celsius. If K of acetone per 100 gram is what? 16.7. We have to calculate the mass of one mole of the organic solid so let's go ahead and look at our solution so we have acetone balls at this temperature so the temperature for the pure for the pure solvent is uh which is our t is uh, 56.38 all right no this is tv all right uh, so in a solution of 1.41 gram of organic solid so it means our small w is what 1.41 gram okay so we have 20 gram of acetone so it means capital w is what 20 grams and it boils at this temperature so it means our our t sorry our t is what 56.88 degrees celsius now, if K of acetone per 100 gram is what, 16.7, so it means our KB is what, 16.7, we have to calculate the mass of one mole of the organic solid. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at that. So we have, uh, from here, we know our delta T is equal to the formula KB multiplied by small w multiplied by because they are saying what if k of acetone per 100 grams so we are using 100 all divided by what capital w multiplied by small m now we know our delta t over here okay our delta t over here will be t minus tb so it becomes what 56.88 minus what 56.38 to be equal to our KB is what 16.7 multiplied by our small w is what 1.41 grams then multiply by 100 all on our capital W is 20 grams so our small m is what we don't know so we are going to make that the subject all right so uh, if we make m the subject over here we get what our 16 0.7 multiplied by 1.41 multiplied by 100 divided by 20 multiplied by 0 0.50 that is if we subtract this from this we get what 0 0.50 so our molar mass okay is equal to 235.47 gram per mole and now the question is telling us to calculate the mass of one more of the organic solid so we now have the molar mass of the solid and we know that the mole is what one mole and we have the molar mass to be equal to what 235.47 gram per mole so we can easily calculate the mass of the organic solid okay so the mass over here the mass of the organic solid we what we know mole is what mass over what molar mass so if we make mass the subject which is W, we get 
mole multiplied by what the molar mass so our mass in this example will be our mole which is 1 multiplied by what 235.47 okay so our our mass of the organic solid is what 235.47 grams okay so this is the mass of our organic solid all right let's have a look at one final example now in a cultural determination 22 gram of benzene was used as a solvent all right so let's write down our solution so we have here 22 gram of benzene was used as a solvent so we know our capital w is what 22 grams now the reading on the differential thermometer before and after adding 0 0.5 so it means our mass of the solute is 0 0.586 of naphthalene so the reading on the differential thermometer after adding before and after adding 0 0.5 586 gram of naphthalene where this and this okay so it means our change in temperature from here straight away we know it's zero uh, 1.799 minus 1.262 all right respectively now in a separate experiment using the same amount of benzene but this time adding 0 0.627 gram of an organic compound x the thermometer readings were this and this so we have to calculate the molar mass of x so it means the first values that we were given in the first experiment we have to use it to find kb and after we find kb we have to use that value of the kb in the second experiment to find the value of what x since we are using the same organic solvent all right so we've been given the molar mass of naphthalene which is what uh, small m to be what 128 all right so from here we move straight away and we look for the value of our kb so we know delta t is what kb multiplied by w multiplied by a thousand all on what small m by capital w okay now in this case we have to find what kb so we make kb the subject so if we make kb the subject we have our formula to be what delta t multiplied by m multiplied by capital w divided by small w by what thousand now we know kb is equal to the change in temperature as what we have over here will give us a value of what 0 0.537 multiplied by m the m is what 128 so we have 128 here the capital w okay is 22 so we have 22 here on a small w is uh, 0 0.586 multiplied by what by thousand all right so our kb from here is equal to what 2.58 so this is the value of our kb okay now now that we have the value of kb we have to use it to find what use it to find the molar mass okay of the organic compound x from the second experiment so let's list down the parameters in the second experiment so in a in a separate experiment using the same the same amount of benzene so it means the same amount of benzene means our capital w is what still 22 grams okay uh, same amount of benzene but this time adding so our mass small m is what 0 0.627 grams of organic compound x and we know the mass of uh, the molar mass is still 128 so the thermometer readings were this so we have our delta t will be what the bigger one which is 1.963 minus what 1.269 all right so if we do that subtraction we are going to get from here if we do that subtraction we are going to get 0 0.694 so all we have to do is to write down the formula this formula and make what the molar mass over here the subject so if we make molar mass the subject we have the formula to be what kb multiplied by small w multiplied by thousand 
all divided by what? Delta T multiplied by capital W. Now this is for the separate separate experiment. So all we have to do is to substitute these values into this formula and find the molar mass of the compound X. So let's go ahead and do that. So our M is equal to, uh, let me rewrite the formula. We have KB multiplied by W multiplied by 100, sorry, 1000 on what? Delta T multiplied by capital W. So our M is equal to what? Our KB that we found was 2.58 multiplied by our small W was what? 0 0.627 multiplied by 1000. Now, the values on the temperature, the difference was what? 0 0.694 multiplied by the same mass of the organic solvent, which is what? 22. So if we input everything here into the calculator, we are going to get 105.95 as our molar mass. So it means the molar mass of the compound X is what? 105.95 grams per mole okay so this is the value or this is the molar mass of our compound x so thank you so much for watching hello and welcome to my science tutorials in today's video we are going to be talking about Raoult's law and freezing point depression calculations now in our first two previous tutorials we did mention what colligative properties are and their examples we also did look at the vapor pressure depression and then the boiling point elevation and the relationship between them. Now in today's tutorial, we want to look at the relationship between the freezing point depression and lowering of vapor pressure. Now whenever we add a solute to a solution, the, the vapor pressure of the resulting solution decreases and hence it increases what the boiling point of the solution. Now with the increase of boiling point, it also decreases what? The freezing point hence we have what we call as the freezing point depression as one of the colligative properties now the change in freezing point can be represented by what delta t which is equal to what t final minus t initial to get our change in the freezing point of the resulting solution now delta t okay can be given mathematically as delta t is equal to what Kf multiplied by W multiplied by 1000 all on small m multiplied by capital W where we are saying this is what the change change in freezing point or the freezing point depression change in freezing point and Kf is the what is the freezing point constant this is the freezing point constant. Freezing point constant. The small w is the mass of solute. Mass of solute. The small m is the molar mass or the molecular mass of solute. And capital W is what the mass of the solvent all right now we have thousand over here because ideally okay we dissolve the mass of the solute in one kilogram of the solvent now there are instances where we may dissolve we may dissolve uh, the solute in 0 0.1 kilogram or what 100 grams of the solvent now, when that happens, it means our freezing point depression becomes what Kf multiplied by W multiplied by 100 all on small m times W, capital W, where all the other parameters have the same definition. But the only difference is here is 1000 and here is 100. So for the 1000, it means we dissolve the solute in what? 1 kilogram of the solvent. But then where we have the 100, it means we dissolve the solute in 0 0.1 or 100 grams of the solvent all right now there are some times where kf or the freezing point depression constant can be given to you there are other instances where it may not be given 
So in case the KF is not given, how do you calculate the KF from the, par uh, from the parameters that will be given to you in the question so that you can be able to go ahead and calculate for the molar mass or any other thing that the question may require of you. So the KF can be calculated from the formula R TF squared over 1000 multiplied by LF where KF we know is the freezing point constant TF is the freezing point of the solvent so we have freezing freezing point of solvent that is uh, for the TF we have LF the LF over here is the molar latent heat of fusion so molar latent heat of fusion and then the r is what is the gas constant all right so with this formula we can calculate the value of kf and once we get kf we can easily substitute kf into this equation and we can calculate for any other parameter that the question may require of s so now with this basic introduction let's go ahead and solve some few examples to actually get well acquainted with our problems on freezing point depression so the first example we want to look at is uh, 0 0.440 gram of a substance dissolved in 22.2 grams of benzene lower the freezing point of benzene by 0 0.567 degrees celsius we have to calculate the molar mass of the substance given that kf is equal to 5.12 degrees celsius per mole all right so let's write down our solution first of all i would like to code the formula we have tf delta t sorry is equal to what kf multiplied by w multiplied by thousand all on small m multiplied by capital w now we have 0 0.440 gram of the substance so it means the mass which is the small w of the solute is what 0 0.440 grams was dissolved in 22.2 gram of benzene so it means the capital w over here is equal to what 22.2 grams so it lowered the freezing point of benzene by this so it means our delta t is what 0 0.567 degrees celsius and then we have to calculate for the molar mass given that kf is equal to 5.12 degrees celsius per mole so straight ahead we can go ahead and find our molar mass so if i make m the subject from here it means our molar mass will be equal to what kf multiplied by w multiplied by thousand all divided by delta T multiplied by capital W. So it means our molar mass is equal to the value of KF is what? 5.12 multiplied by small w, which is 0 0.440 multiplied by 1000. All on delta T is uh, 0 0.567 multiplied by capital W is 22.2. So if we input everything here into the calculator, we are going to get 178.97. So it means the molar mass of the substance given at KF is equal to 5.2, 5.12 is equal to 179 gram per mole approximately. So this is the molar mass of the substance. Now let's look at another example. Example number two. So we have 1.250 gram of naphthalene was dissolved in 60 cm cube of benzene and the freezing point of the solution was found to be 277.515 Kelvin while that of benzene is 278.495 Kelvin. Density of benzene is 0 0.880 gram per cm cube. Kf is equal to 5.1 Kelvin per thousand gram of benzene so we have to calculate the molar mass of benzene so let's write out our solution and look at the parameters that we have so from the question we know that the small w which is the mass of the uh, naphthalene is what 1.250 
grams and uh, it was dissolved in 60 grams of benzene so we know volume of what solvent is what 60 cm cube and the freezing point um, was found to be this and that of benzene is this so if you look at this we can say that of benzene is higher so it means our delta t straight away from here will be what 278.9 sorry 0.495 minus what 277.515 okay so that will give us the value of our uh, delta t now okay let's see what else we have the density of benzene so density of what solvent is what 0 0.880 gram per cm cube and we were given kf so we have to calculate for uh, the mass of naphtha now if we look at this we know delta t as we already know is what kf multiplied by w multiplied by thousand divided by what small m multiplied by what capital w now we can see that we have everything in the question except capital w so it means we need to find what the mass of the solvent first before we can proceed to find any other thing so we know that mass concentration okay or the density over here is what mass over volume okay so now that we have this so we are we are saying our mass will be capital w okay so if we make capital w the subject it means we have to multiply our density by the volume so our mass of the solvent is density which is what 0 0.880 multiplied by the volume which is what 60 cm cube so we multiply that by 60 we are going to get uh, 52 0.8 grams all right so now that we have the value of our capital w we can substitute that back into the formula and find the molar mass of the naphtali so if we make m the subject we know we are going to get kf multiplied by w multiplied by thousand sorry thousand all over what delta t multiplied by what capital w all right so uh delta t here if we do the subtraction we are going to get 0 0.98 kelvin so our molar mass is what kf which is what 5.1 given to us over here multiplied by 1 1.1.250 that is a small w over here then multiplied by thousand divided by the change in temperature or the freezing point is what 0 0.98 then we multiply it by the value of the capital W or the mass of the solvent that we found that is what 52.8 so if we input everything here into the calculator we are going to get 123.20 so it means approximately the molar mass molar mass of naphthalene of naphthalene naphthalene is 123 grams per mole that is approximately all right let's have a look at one final example then we end this beautiful tutorial so we have a solution of 0 0.124 gram of substance x in 25 liters of ethanoic acid has the freezing point of what 0 0.324 degrees celsius below that of pure uh, acid sorry this is supposed to be pure not this so this is what pure pure acid okay acid which is a uh, 16.6 degrees celsius so we have to calculate the molar mass of s given that specific latent heat of fusion of ethanoic acid is 180.75 joules per gram given that r is equal to what three 8.314 all right so let's write down our solution so we have a solution of uh, so it means the mass small w is what 0 0.124 grams of substance s now the volume of the ethanoic acid or our solvent volume of 
our solvent is what 25 liters okay so uh has a freezing point of this below that of pure acid so it means the delta t is equal to 0 0.324 degrees celsius all right so we have to calculate uh, the molecular mass of this given that uh, latent heat of fusion that is lf is equal to 180.75 joules per gram and then r is equal to 8.314 all right so we know that um, our delta t is equal to what kf multiplied by small w multiplied by thousand all on what capital w capital w by what small n all right so from here we can see that we don't have kf so we need to find what the value of kf all right so if we calculate the value of kf we, we are going to use the formula rtf squared over what thousand lf so it means our kf is equal to what 8.314 this is the temperature of uh, our pure ether that is a uh, tf is equal to what 16.6 so we use that uh it's in degree celsius so we convert it to kelvin so we add 273 and that will give us what 289 this is 89.6 kelvin so this multiplied by what 289.6 all squared divided by thousand multiplied by the lf was given to us in the question as 180.75 so this is equal to if we input everything here into the calculator we are going to get what 3.86 as the value of our kf so now that we have the value of kf we can go ahead and uh, calculate for our molar mass of naphthalene so it means from here if we make m the subject you are going to have kf multiplied by small w multiplied by thousand all on then we have delta t multiplied by what capital w all right so we have our molar mass to be equal to our kf that we've calculated was uh, 3.86 multiplied by w which is uh, 0 0.124 multiplied by 1000 on delta t is uh, 0 0.324 multiplied by now we have w we we're given volume but we we're not given any density for us to be able to calculate for the weight of um or the mass of uh, the this is so because we're not given w and uh capital w and we were only given uh, the volume to be 25 and we're not given density for us to be able to manipulate and calculate the value of our capital w we use the 25 there as the weight or the mass of our solvent so we multiply this by 25 now it means our mass will not be uh, our molar mass sorry will not be equal to what 59.109 gram per mole Okay, so it means our molecular mass of X, okay, is now what, uh, 59.09 gram per mole. Alright, so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome to my science tutorials. In today's video, we are going to be talking about osmotic pressure of dilute solutions. Now, in our first three tutorials, previous tutorials, we did mention that osmotic pressure is one of the colligative properties aside the vapor pressure depression the boiling point elevation and then the freezing point depression now in today's tutorial we want to look at what osmosis and osmotic pressure is and how we can use osmotic pressure to calculate for the molecular weight or the molecular mass of a particular solvent all right so we want to look at what osmosis is so osmosis is the flow of solvent from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution through a semi-permeable membrane. So if we have two containers and they are being separated by a semi-permeable membrane, if we have the flow of what solvent from the dilute solution to the concentrated solution, we refer to that phenomenon as osmosis. Now, osmotic pressure 
is the external force or the external pressure applied to a solution in order to stop osmosis of the solvent into the solution through the semi-permeable membrane. So what osmotic pressure does is what it prevents osmosis from occurring and this is an example of a colligative property that we would like to look at what it is. So the osmotic pressure the osmotic pressure okay denoted by pi okay is uh, the osmotic pressure denoted by pi for solutions or for dilute solutions it's given by the van hoff equation as what pi v is equal to what rt okay so we we have this as the formula for the osmotic pressure given that what we are dealing with what one mole of the solvent okay so if we have n mole n mole of the solvent the formula becomes what pi v is equal to what n r t where our pi we are saying is the osmotic osmotic pressure our v is what the volume okay volume of solvent in liters okay our t is the temperature temperature in kelvin our n is the number of moles of solute added and then our r is a constant okay and the value of this r is what 0 0.0821 and the unit is what liters atmosphere per kelvin per mole now if you are aware that we have a formula like this in gases which is what pv is equal to nrt now the r over here which in this is for gases Okay, the R here is what we call the gas constant. Okay, and that R has a value of what? 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. Okay, now this R is different from the R that we are using in osmotic pressure. So when you're dealing with osmotic pressure and you're writing this formula, please do not go and use this uh, gas constant. Uh, R, okay so let's use this this is what we are uh, we are using if you're not given in the question you need to know that the value is what 0 0.0821 liters atmosphere per Kelvin per mole okay so that you do not get your computation wrong all right so with this basic introduction let's have a look at how to use this formula for osmotic pressure to calculate uh, for some few examples so the first one we want to look at is a solution of sugar cane with a relative molecular mass of 342 containing 34.2 gram per liter has an osmotic, uh, has an osmotic pressure of 2.4 ATM or atmosphere at 20 degrees Celsius. We have to calculate the value of R in liters per atmosphere. So let's first of all write down our solution. And let's uh, look at the parameters that we have. So we have a solution of sugar cane with this. So it means the molecular weight, okay, so M of sugar cane is what? 342 is the molar mass, so it's gram per mole. And then it has this. So this is the mass concentration. So the mass concentration is given to us as 34.2 gram per liter. Now, the osmotic pressure with this pi is given to us as what 2.4 atm then the temperature is given to us as 20 which is we add 273 to it to get the absolute temperature which is what 293 kelvin all right so if we look at uh, the question we can see that we have all the parameters that we need so let's go ahead and see if we can find um, what the question is asking us. so we know that pi v is equal to what nrt okay so we have pi we don't have volume 
we don't have mo we have r we have t so it means we need to find what we need to find a volume and we need to find what the mo all right so because we have this okay the mass concentration over here is gram per liter it is telling us that what what the v which is the volume of the solution in liters contains what one mole of the solute so it means the volume over here the volume of solution volume of solution contains okay one mole of solute now if that is the case we know um that our mole from here from this the volume contains one mole of solute we know our mole is now equal to what one so we can now go ahead and use the mass concentration to look at what we can find. So we know that mass concentration is equal to what concentration multiplied by what molecular mass. All right. So from here, we can make concentration the subject. If we do that, we know that we are going to get um, the mass concentration, which is uh, 34.2 divided by the molar mass, which is what 342. So it means our concentration will be what 0 0.1 molar now that we have our concentration okay we need to calculate for our volume okay so we know that concentration is equal to what more over volume so if we make our volume the subject we are going to have the more over what concentration and we said that the volume contains what one mole of the solid so we are using one as our mole and then the concentration that we found was what 0 0.1 so this is giving us our volume okay to be equal to what 10 liters 10 liters over here now once we found the volume we can now use this formula to calculate for our r so it means our pi v let me use another color so our pi now is what 34 no sorry 2.4 multiplied by our volume is 10 which is equal to our mole we said is 1 our r is what we don't know and our temperature is what 293 all right so it means we have this multiplied by this we get 24 is equal to what 293 r so we divide both sides by 293 293 so we get the value of our r to be equal to what 0.08 one nine what liters atmosphere per kelvin per mole so we can see that the value of the r over here that we calculated is very close to the one that i originally gave during the beginning of this tutorial that is equal to 0 0.0821 so we can see the difference between this and this is what is plus or minus 0 0.0002 so this is the value of r and uh, we use uh, this okay uh, as the standard value when we are doing calculations and we are not given r all right so we want to look at the second example so example number two we are to calculate the osmotic pressure of five percent solution of glucose given that the molecular weight of glucose is what 180 at what 18 degrees celsius so let's go ahead and see what we can do so we have our solution we have the formula which is a uh, pi v is equal to what nrt uh you can see that we have to find osmotic pressure so it means our pi we don't know our volume uh let's the volume be there we know our r is equal to what 0 0.0821 and then we know our temperature we were given 18 over here so we have 18 plus what 273 which is equal to what 293 kelvin over there sorry this is uh 291 291 kelvin all right now we can see that we have five percent solution so five percent solution of glucose solution of glucose so it means okay the mass of the solute okay dissolved in the solution over here five percent means what five over hundred so it means the mass 
okay, dissolved in a particular volume to form the solution of the glucose solution will be what? 5 grams of the glucose in what? 100 ml of the solvent to form the 5% solution. So it means our volume from this is what? 100 ml, which is equal to what? 0.1 liters. Okay? And it means from here, our mass, okay, our mass M is equal to what? 5 grams. All right. So now that we have all these parameters, we can easily go ahead and calculate for our osmotic pressure. So from here, we know osmotic pressure pi, the volume is what? 0 0.1 is equal to our N, which is the mole, uh, is what we have over here. So our mole, we know, uh, we know that mole is what? Mass over molar mass. So we have our mass, we said is what? 5. So we write 5 over here. Our molar mass is what? 180. So we have we have 180 here. Then we multiply this by our R, which we are saying is what? 0 0.0821. Then we multiply that by the temperature, which is what? 291 Kelvin. All right. So we have 0 0.1 pi. 0 0.1 pi is equal to if we input everything over here into the calculator we are going to get 0 0.66417 so now that we have this we divide both sides by 0 0.1 0 0.1 so we have our pi the value of pi to be equal to what 6.64 atm or atmosphere so that is the value of our atmospheric sorry our osmotic pressure all right let's have a look at one final example so we have to calculate the osmotic pressure of a solution obtained by mixing so we are mixing two solutions together so a uh, 100 ml of 3.4 uh, percent solution of urea given that the molar mass of urea is 60 and 100 ml of 1.6 percent of solution of sugar cane given that the molar mass is what 342 at what 20 degrees Celsius right so let's look at what we have the first one the E the E we have uh, we have 3% so we have 3.4 percent of urea all right so we have 3.4 percent this implies our mass okay is 3.4 grams and our volume is what 100 milliliters okay from over here we know our molar mass is equal to what 60 gram per mole this is molar mass okay we know the value of our r uh, even if we are not given is 0 0.0821 liters atmosphere per kelvin per mole all right we, we were given temperature to be what 20 so we add 20 to what 273 and that will give us what 293 kelvin but now remember we have to calculate the osmotic pressure obtained by mixing so it means we mix 100 ml of urea and then 100 ml of uh sugar cane so it means the total volume for both the solution the total volume okay that is v total Will be equal to 100 ml plus 100 ml which is what 200 ml which is what 0 0.2 liters so it means the osmotic pressure for the first one which is what pi v to become pi vt is equal to what nrt we know our pi we don't know and our volume is now 0 0.2 our mole is what the mass which is 3.4 over the molar mass which is 60 multiplied by the r which is what 0 0.0821 multiplied by the temperature which is 293 so we have 0 0.2 pi to be equal to if we punch everything here into the calculator we are going to get 1.363 so our pi is equal to what 1.363 on 0 0.2 so our pi is equal to what 6.82 ATM. All right, now the B. The B is also saying what 100 ml of what 1.6 percent of sugarcane solution. 
So 1.6 implies our mass is what 1.6. Our volume over here is what 100 ml. But we know which was given to us. But we know we missed uh, two solutions. So we have the total volume. V total is what 200 ml, which is also equal to what 0 0.2 liters. All right. We were given uh, the molar mass to be what 342 gram per mole and we know we are still at the same temperature so from here we know pi vt would be equal to what nrt like we have over here so we have our pi 0 0.2 as the total volume our mole is now equal to what the mass over the molar mass which is 342 over here multiplied by the r which is a uh, 0 0.0821 multiplied by the temperature which is what uh, 293 which is what we have over here so if we punch everything here into the calculator we are going to get 0 0.1125 and if we divide it by 0 0.2 we are going to get our pi which is our uh, osmotic pressure for the B to be what 0 0.568 atm now remember the main question is saying we have to calculate the osmotic pressure of the solution obtained by mixing so since we missed the two solution and the individual osmotic pressures are this and this respectively it means the total osmotic pressure total pi okay is equal to what 6.82 plus 0 0.56 and this is equal to what 7.38 at and or atmospheres so this brings us to the end of how to calculate uh, uh, questions on osmotic pressure hello and welcome to my science tutorials in today's video I want to talk about the determination of molecular weight from osmotic pressure now in our previous tutorial we did establish the fact that osmotic pressure given to us by pi okay uh, can be given to us by the van Holt equation as what pi v is equal to what nrt where we are saying our pi is the osmotic pressure in atmosphere so osmotic pressure pressure in atmosphere or atm we are saying our v is the volume of solution volume of solution in liters and uh, our n is the mole of solute the mole of solute the mole of solute our r we are saying is a constant okay and the value of that constant is what 0 0.0821 liters atmosphere per kelvin per mole where t is what the absolute up absolute sorry absolute temperature temperature in kelvin now when we want to determine the molecular weight or the molecular mass of the solute present all we need to do is to the mole over here the mole we've been using the notation since the beginning of collaborative property w over what small m we are saying the small w is what is the mass of the solute and the cap uh, the small m is what the molar mass uh, molar mass of the solute so if we do this substitution into this formula we get what pi v to be equal to what w over what m multiplied by rt so let's try to make m the subject or the molecular mass the subject so if you want to do that you get what pi v over here to be equal to what wrt on what m so if we make m the subject we get what wrt divided by what pi v so it means when we want to calculate the molar mass of a particular solute provided we don't know the solute and we only know the mass and we know the osmotic pressure we can use this formula this formula to calculate what the molar mass of the solute and we can be able to see this um, particular solute based on the molar mass is likely to be what a 
particular type of solute based on the molar mass. So with this basic introduction, let's have a look at some few examples. So example number one, we have a, a solution of glucose containing 18 gram per liter was observed to have an osmotic pressure of what 2.39 atmosphere at 23 degrees Celsius. So we have to calculate the molecular weight of glucose. All right, so we have a solution of glucose containing 18 gram per liter. So it means our mass is the small w is what 18 grams per liter means our volume is what thousand um thousand milliliters which is what one liter and uh, our osmotic pressure pi is equal to what 2.39 atm and our temperature is what 23 meanwhile uh, degree Celsius so we need to add what 273 to it to get it in Kelvin and if we add that we get what 296 Kelvin right so now that we have all the parameters that we need uh, we just need to put a formula for the molecular weight or the molecular mass calculation from the equation what pi v is equal to what nrt we know that our pi v our uh, move we are saying is what the mass what the molar mass rt so if we make m the subject over here we are getting our m to be what wrt over what pi v all right so our m is equal to our w is 18 our r we said uh, is what 0 0.0821 so we have 0 0.0821 multiplied by the temperature we said is what 296 divided by our pi which is the osmotic pressure is what 2.39 multiplied by the volume which is what per liter so it is one so if we do the computation we see that our molecular weight is what 183.02 so therefore it means the molecular weight weight of glucose of glucose is equal to what 183 approximately all right example number two a solution of glycol containing 1.821 gram per liter has an has an osmotic pressure of 0 0.682 atmosphere of mercury at 10 degrees Celsius. What is the molecular mass of glycol? So just like we did for the first example, we have let me write solution. We have the mass is small w is what 1.821 gram per liter means the volume is what one liter, and then the osmotic pressure was given to us to be what 0 0.682 atm. The temperature is what 10, so we add what 273 to it, which will give us what 283 Kelvin. So we have to calculate the molecular mass of glycol. So, uh, straight ahead, we know the molecular mass or the molecular weight will be what m is equal to what wrt over what pi v. So we have our m to be w is what 1.821, which is the mass of the solute multiplied by the constant which we are saying is what 0 0.0821 multiplied by the temperature which we found to be what 283 divided by the osmotic pressure which is what 0 0.682 multiplied by the volume which is 1 so it means our molecular mass okay of the glycol is what 62 if we do the computation of all this we get what 62 0 0.04 gram per mole as the molecular mass of glycol. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.